Well, hi, everybody. It's that gratitude guy, David George Brook, with another special guest for our gratitude podcast interview. Today, I have John Flora, and I was thinking about John this morning. He's become a good friend of mine over the last uh, half dozen, six, seven years, and I've been able to do some speaking for him and gotten to know him very well. That's somebody I, I learned to uh, listen to. There's not everybody I listen to, but I listen to John. So, John, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, David. It's good to be with you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. So, this is the gratitude podcast interview the pandemic so I've got I've got several questions for you John and my first would be what is your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic that's an interesting question I'm I'm finding very quickly that I am not a good work from home person I think I've always known that I'm good for you know working at home on a Friday and I take a project home but to do this on an extended basis I'm finding my day is getting longer and mm. this cabin fever thing going um but i think maybe is um uh, i think I, I guess my best coping mechanism is to do this kind of communication to the extent i can I've done a lot more of this in the last uh, several weeks and probably uh even more primitive than that is spending time with my dog um i have to laugh she's an old lab and she's become, become kind of a puppy again in the last two days. She's oh, wow. She's flying everybody's home. And so there is something to that. They are really a companion. And uh, most of the time, she's kind of curled up in my feet, sound asleep, but then all of a sudden, she'll pop up and want to go for a walk or what have you. And there is something about that as a coping mechanism that which, makes a difference. Cool. And, and I have to ask you, because I'm kind of the same way. I don't know if we've shared this before, but... I work much better at Starbucks than I do at the condo. And I'm looking out at Lake Sammamish. It's really nice. But what is it about that for you? Is it the other people around? Is it the interactions? Is it just the, the structure of the office? What makes that work so much better? Yeah, I think it is the structure because I live on Vashon Island on the water and I have a, a lovely view of uh, Quartermaster Harbor. Um, but that, you know, if I can do it for a day or two, that could, be, particularly in the summer, I can work out on my deck and it's mm, That's nice. Right now it's cold, it's, it's blustery. We had hail yesterday. Mm -hmm. And um, I, that part, uh, I think everything just gets kind of closed in a little bit. And I went up to our town to go to the grocery store and the post office and the bank, that kind of thing. And there was, it, to be able to get out and go talk to a few people, even if yeah. I didn't tell them, uh, was good. And that sort of harkens back to your Starbucks analogy. Yeah. Uh, but I'm actually doing this from my office today. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple people here, and I think we're all kind of glad to be back together to be uh, sociable physically uh, instead of electronically. And that does make a difference. It does. And, cer it's, and certainly makes us appreciate those things that are taken away. You don't appreciate something until you don't have it anymore. So, so second question is, so during this is such an uncertain time, what do you find you're most grateful for? My family mm -hmm. uh, and my colleagues. Uh, we're a small organization with about 18 people. And we've managed to hang together pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, I suspect there's a few sitting at home watching the view and, and, uh, and Ellen and some of that nonsense during the day. Uh, right. Apologies to anyone. <laughs> uh, but I think for the most part, are this kind of mechanism, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, yeah, that's, 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 again, it's important that it's, when something's taken away, we just don't appreciate it until we see, take it away and remember that we had it. So, so any tips or thoughts, ideas, or things for people to do as we're going through this that you found that worked for you? Well, for me, I am still trying to get up at my normal hour and get to work. Um, I, while I'm not uh, religious about this, I do try to get dressed and look decent. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been a few days of sweats and t-shirts, but for the most part, I try and conduct my life as normally as possible. Part of that is doing this kind of thing. You have to look reasonably decent, at least yeah. right. uh, well, uh, the old television trick. But, uh, <laughs> but, I, but I do like uh, when we've talked uh, earlier in the week, uh, I did have a pair of slacks on with a crease and shine shoes. Uh, <laughs> not to impress you by any means, but it sort of keeps my mind going uh, in a professional manner. And right. so... Uh, and, and then I, I try and keep the schedule as much as I can to normal, although that's proving to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. People working all the time. Mm -hmm. So my day gets to be a lot longer than it might normally be. Um, 
and I and I guess from uh, given that I run a member organization, members, just to see how they're doing. And I'm, I'm hardly a therapist, but there's days like that. Oh know. yeah. And and there are some industries that we work with, particularly hospitality in Hawaii, and uh, right. to a lesser extent in Alaska, where those the whole industry is gone. And those people want our help, and we're trying to do provide help to the best we can. But there's only so much we can do. But at the very least, they like to talk to somebody. Yeah. So that's true. That's how. I, so um, you know, I take a few every day and pick up the phone and call. And yeah. that helps me too. That's that's a really good point. It is really you and I have discussed this before. Management is really part therapist and counselor and that type of thing too when you're managing these things called human beings and stuff. So so last question, John, do you have sort of a quote or a philosophy that you kind of uh, sustains you through this or anything that's kind of a John Flora uh, philosophy, if you will? Hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's coming to mind. That's that's fine. Uh, I, I, <laughs> you know, I, I suppose. Um, hmm. Probably the first thing that comes to mind for me on that would be uh, living in a small community. When I go to the grocery store, my wife goes to the grocery store. We're calling our neighbors now to see if they need anything. Oh, and that seems nice. like a small thing, but most of them are are north of seventy, and they're all ambulatory and healthy and active people. But they are staying home and really right. not even venturing out of the yard. And wow. so, if if we can, you know, that's that's a a simple gesture just to see if somebody needs anything. Um, and I think that kind of carries on as I was just talking about working with our, our hospitality community or some of the other industries we work with. Uh, what do you need? How can we help you? I mean, I'd like to think that others are going to work in that same way, but it is really kind of the golden rule. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. And I've heard uh, the whole purpose in doing this was to get a lot of different perspectives to help other people. And here's a thought, a tip, a philosophy, a, a quote, whatever it might be. I've heard a lot of this too shall pass, you know, that, which is something we're all in this together and so forth. So excellent. Well, thank you so much for that. I appreciate you being part of the uh, gratitude podcast interview for the pandemic. And uh, I appreciate your time and we will chat soon. So thank you for being on the show. You bet. Thank you, David. You bet.